Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. I am wearing this outfit because I've recently become a US citizen. It has taken us six years. We came to the US in 2015 on a tourist visa, loved the country, applied for the O1 work visas, uh, got them, applied for green cards, and after spending four years and nine months on a green card, I've applied for my citizenship. And here I am right in front of you, a new US citizen. So today we're gonna talk about American idioms that I've heard here while talking to people. Just a quick reminder, idioms are very important. As a non-native speaker, I notice that native speakers use them very, very often. Almost every conversation that I have with a native speaker includes one or two idioms. So I'm really glad I've been learning them. And today we'll learn some of the most common ones. Let's do it. Idiom number one, to be on fire. To be on fire means to be doing really well. Let's look at an example. Last year, Tesla shares were on fire when they went over $1,000 per share. So in this example, Tesla stocks were appreciating within a short amount of time. They were on fire. Yeah, she's doing great. She's on fire. The next idiom is to stop a runaway train, meaning to stop something from getting worse. Someone could say, we have to do something to stop this runaway train or else we're going to go out of business. During COVID, a lot of businesses couldn't really function, so they had to do something to prevent further losses. So they basically had to stop a runaway train. And there were several solutions, go fully remote, raise prices, or what we did at LinguaTrip. LinguaTrip was initially a study abroad booking platform, and in 2020, it became almost impossible to travel so we had to pivot to online education and we started creating our own courses. If you want to check them out, we have incredible teachers. The link will be down in the description box below with all the promo codes. This lunch is already a runaway train, no point in stopping it. To be worth a shot. This idiom is used to describing something worth doing, even if you might not succeed. It might not work out, but it's worth a shot. Let's do it. What do we have to lose? So for example, if you've been thinking of studying abroad, but you can't afford it right now, try applying for scholarships. It's definitely worth a shot. You're not losing anything, but if you get a scholarship, you get a chance to study abroad. I never actually went in there, but it's worth a shot. Idiom number four, to take the high road, which means to make the correct moral decision. You might be okay writing off all of these fraudulent expenses, but I'm going to take the high road on this one and follow my accountant's suggestions. Let me explain this example. It's the end of the year and uh, a lot of businesses are trying to increase their expenses because any eligible business expense is a write-off, means you can deduct them from your profit and your profit is taxable. So by having more expenses and having less profit, you reduce your tax base. Now, sometimes people write off things that are not necessarily a write-off. And in this example, a friend suggests to write off, I don't know, whatever you think is not a write-off, expensive jewelry. And by taking the high road, you're making the right moral decision to not write off fraudulent expenses, uh, but to instead pay higher taxes. If that's taking the high road, what's the low road? Idiom number five, to level the playing field, to make everyone's chance at success the same. For example, here in Silicon Valley, tech companies have been leveling the playing field by hiring more women. Silicon Valley is a place where there are a lot of IT companies. A lot of my friends work for Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, you know, all the big tech companies. But because they employ a lot of programmers and engineers, there haven't been too many females employed in those companies. And they decided to level the playing field by creating workspaces for women so that everyone has the same chances regardless of their gender. The enemy's new fifth generation fighter has leveled the playing field. Now on to the next idiom, 
to draw the line, to make a boundary about something. So basically you do something, but there is a certain point where you draw the line, you stop and don't go any further. I've addressed other people's comments about my English in a recent video, but this is where I draw the line and I'm not gonna comment any further. There comes a time where one must draw a line in the sand. To roll with the punches, to adapt yourself to some adverse circumstances. Our life, this is our life 100%. We always roll with the punches. This means, you know, you're trying to immigrate in the US, but first you get your visa refused. Then you're struggling to rent an apartment. Then you're struggling with the money, <laughs> but you're still paving your way. You're still uh, growing your business. You're still doing what you think is the best for you. You're rolling with the punches. This is totally normal. I mean, in relationships, you have to roll with the punches. To be a big deal, to be considered important. I go to a lot of creator parties and sometimes a big creator comes and everybody starts saying, oh, she's a big deal. She has over 10 million followers. She's a big deal, you have to meet her. You can say that about a person or you can say that about something else. It's a big deal that you're graduating from Stanford this year would definitely need to celebrate. It's very important, right, that you're graduating. By the way, always pay attention to how a native speaker says something. Because in a moment, you're gonna hear another example of how people use this idiom, and the meaning is different. I'm gonna play it to you, but I'm not gonna change, so sorry, it's gonna be the same character. But for the purpose of this video, I think it should be fine. I heard your brother just landed a job on Wall Street. Big deal. They're a bunch of crooks anyway. So here, big deal means nothing special, who cares? A completely different meaning. This is a big deal, this promotion. To break the ice. I've heard this many, many times. I was at a dinner yesterday. It was a round table dinner, 10 people from the creator economy industry. And the host started this dinner by saying, let me break the ice by introducing myself and asking you all a question. It's a good thing to start an event where a lot of people don't know each other with some kind of question so that everyone can answer the question and uh, share something personal. And then this way, everyone gets to know each other. To break the ice. I know a good ice breaking exercise. To be hammered means to be drunk. I don't usually drink much, but I got totally hammered this weekend in Napa. Napa is this lovely place, an hour and a half drive from where I live. And Napa is one of the world's most famous wine destinations. But she's totally hammered. And if I get with her and I'm not drunk, isn't that like unethical? Fork it over means to give something to someone. You can use this phrase when you're asking someone for something and that person is reluctant to give it to you. Come on, fork it over. 10 bucks, fork it over. To pay the piper. To pay the piper means to accept the consequences or pay for some action. Some people say that because the US government has printed so much money recently, at some point we will have to pay the piper. Meaning we will have to literally pay for the consequences of this fiscal policy. And we're already doing that because inflation is really high. And I see it when I go shopping. Oh, this is a funny, well, funny, funny example. I recycle bottles. When you buy a glass bottle of milk, we used to pay a $2 refundable deposit. Now, recently, they've changed it to $3. See, inflation is real, even in the small things. So it's time to pay the piper. We've done more bad than good in our lives. And it's time to pay the piper. To cough it up means to give something up or over to someone. For example, if a policeman thinks that a suspect has a gun, he says, okay, buddy, where is it? Cough it up give it to me so this is the way you can use this idiom with a physical object another way to use it is when you talk about the truth cough it up means to tell something you've been hiding when you cough up the truth you basically say the truth that you've been hiding we're not leaving until you cough it up number 14 to hang in there to continue doing something even if it's really difficult Imagine you've been posting videos on YouTube 
and you've been posting and posting, but you still haven't made any money on it. My advice would be hang in there. The YouTube game takes some time, but once you find your voice and get traction, you will start making money. Hang in there, Henry. Come on, Henry, all right. To not be your scene, to not be the thing that you actually like. For example, your friends are going to drink beer and you say, you know, that's not really my scene. I think I'll pass. Have fun. Come to your poetry night. It's not really my scene. To kill it. As always, a phrase or an idiom in English or a word in English can have several meanings. You can say to kill it in the meaning of to succeed, or it can also mean to shut something down. As you've noticed, I've started doing quizzes on this channel and I ask you different questions and you answer them. And once you pick an answer, we give you information what is the right answer and why. So most of you are actually killing it in those quizzes. You are getting the right answers. So I can say you guys are killing it. You're succeeding in it. You are killing it today. Oh, let's look at another example. We've been running these ads on Facebook, but I think it's time we kill the campaign. It's not really getting the results we wanted. Here you shut the campaign down. If I quit, the FDA will kill this project. Number 17, to pull the plug. Very similar, uh, means to stop doing something. Imagine you started a business, you invested $20,000 in it, but you weren't able to get any clients. And you say, it's time to pull the plug. Let's get back to the drawing board. Now, the first part means let's shut it down and let's get to the drawing board is actually our next idiom. It means to start something over after having tried something that didn't work. I'm gonna give you an example. Please pay attention to it because it contains a couple more idioms. Look carefully. Our team worked on this project for nine months and when we launched it, we didn't even break even so we decided to get back to the drawing board and three months later, we hit the nail on the head and made a killing. Now we need some explanations here, right? And our idiom number 19, to break even. I hope you guys are writing this down, by the way, because it's very useful to do that, to train your memory. To break even, to get back the amount of money you put into something or to generate enough revenue to cover all your costs. It can be calculated on a monthly basis or on an annual basis, depending on your way of accounting. And this is the first stepping stone in becoming profitable. If you don't break even, you aren't even able to pay for the project expenses, let alone make a profit. I thought the point was to sell the farm, not to break even. Idiom number 20, and you've seen it in a sentence I've read to you a moment ago. To hit the nail on the head, mean to get something right or have success. You got it. You hit the nail on the head. I knew you would figure it out. That's right. You've hit the nail on the head. To make a killing, to make a lot of money on something. It's kind of related to another idiom we discussed today, to be killing it, because making a lot of money is also success. So for example, you start a YouTube channel and it suddenly generates $50,000 of income for you. In this case, you're making a killing. You're making a lot of money. She had just won this big award and made a killing on the house. To be left holding the bag, to be held responsible for something in an unfair way. Even though our team worked on the project together, when it failed, I was the one left holding the bag which means you were the one uh, to take responsibility for the failure and maybe you had to apologize or to fix things. So who's gonna be left holding the bag if they can't blame it on us? To be up your ass. By the way, guys, the idioms that we're mentioning here, I wouldn't necessarily use them in a test. Not all of them. To be up somebody's ass means to annoy someone by refusing to leave them alone. We're going to make sure we install these door handles correctly. Otherwise, we'll have the building department up our asses. Which means if they don't follow the building codes exactly, the building department will find them and make them reinstall the door handles. In your country, you may be able to get away with burying 5,000 people in a mass grave and calling it a day. But in America, 
even a hint of a scandal, and the Senate will be up my ass. To go bust or to go broke means to lose all your money. After many failed business ventures, he finally went bust and lost his home. When somebody makes risky investment decisions, loses their money, you can say they went bust or they went broke. Why did you take my offer? Went broke. And the last idiom for today is to break the mold. It means to do something in a completely new and different way. Imagine you've been learning English for a while and you got tired of it, but then you broke the mold and started learning English with LinguaTrip and you became successful. This means you started learning English in a completely new and different way and it worked for you. They broke the mold when they made you. Thank you guys so much for watching this video up to the very end. Thank you for subscribing to this channel, for liking this video, and I am looking forward to reading your comments. Thank you so much, and I will see you very soon in my next videos. Bye-bye.